Why would you be advocating for the things you advocate for? Aren't you kind of like a spoiled Beverly Hills kid? I would definitely raise my own taxes. That's for sure. I don't know, like. <laughs> listen, I, I can and I can say this from experience, and I apologize <laughs> if this comes off as horribly conceited. Okay, but like, I, I, I think I think back to 2021. Okay, a time period during which my channel made entirely too much money. And I don't remember a single ad. Oh, come on, man! This wasn't entirely too much. Entirely too it? much. No, it wasn't. Well, then send it my way. No, fine. Not, okay, never mind. Not enough. Not enough money. Five you know, kids. Five kids. Send a, it over. A good amount. Oh, a five kids. Damn, you are a good Eastern Orthodox. Here, uh, um, a, a great. Except I don't have the beard, brother. <laughs> you're compensating for that. Um, the the you know I, I don't remember a single Google AdSense check that I got the the numbers in my bank account are abstractions to me but I remember every moment I spent with my family I remember every time I hung out with close friends I remember every like meal that I you know went out and and had with people I care about and I feel like most people are the same way past a certain point money is a cushion maybe you can use it to fund cool projects but past that you know we all as humans fundamentally need basic stuff. And it makes me upset when I think about, you know, there are a lot of people who can't get that because they don't have the money to go out and get food. They don't have the time because they work three jobs so they can take care of their kids. It, like, that to me is fundamental. And, you know, maybe it's all derivative of empathy or whatever. I'd like to think there's a principled ethical position there. But, like, if people in Beverly Hills are that mad about getting taxed higher, like, they can go fuck themselves, I guess. And I can go fuck myself if I ever change my mind on this. Uh, other <laughs> well, people deserve more. I, I would like to kind of dive into this a little bit more. Uh, now that we kind of uh, are on the topic of this, this is a huge critique against you, Vosh, and you mm -hmm. know this, I'm sure, that you're just a, this, uh, this spoiled rich kid with a lot of family connections. How dare you talk about what the working class has been through? You've barely been through it yourself. Are these fair critiques or are people just way off base? That's it, Paul. I mean, look, I'll tell you this much, okay? If a trans person tells me I'm off base and I shouldn't talk about trans issues because I'm cisgender, I'll tell them to go fuck themselves too. I think at the end of the day, if you've got, and I have, and you can find plenty of blowback to my channel because I've done that multiple times to everyone. I've told, I've told black women to their face that they had no right to talk on their issues more than I did. And I believe that because I think at the end of the day, you can make strong ethical arguments for positions that I believe in without ever needing to rely on this like experiential element. I think it's good to listen to people who have experiences with a given thing, poverty, you know, experiencing racism, transphobia, whatever, but that's just information to add to the equation. The equation can be calculated by anyone. So in terms of like whether or not I know what the working people want, who would disagree with me when I say that working people want time to spend with their family, want health care, want the ability to go outside and enjoy a nice walk in a community full of people they know with skies that are clear and air they can breathe without coughing. I feel like these are like maybe the working people don't want that, but if they don't, they probably should. Uh, I feel like those are good things. In, in terms of like the, this, this edge case is always brought up with immigration, like this whole, you know, the working P, you know, your cosmopolitan, you know, uh, uh, Hollywood. I'm dog whistling there when I say that. You know, your cosmopolitan Hollywood upbringing. What, what do you mean your dog whistling when you say Hollywood? Yeah, I, I'm doing the big finger quotes here. I mean, you know? some of the conspiracies are fair. Like, some of them are fair. You know, like, when elitists get the Jewish people big, are in Hollywood? That's not a conspiracy. It's fuck. It's true, but... Right, it's fucking true, right? But I'll tell I mean, you... We, we've, seen, we've seen all these fucking, like, child actors come out and talk about the horrible fucking things that have been done to him and this kind of thing. Like, I don't know if the Hollywood thing needs to really be put in quotes. Oh, that's you know? true. Any any big institution with a lack of oversight interior, like, is going to have those issues. But I don't think that's a Hollywood or an anything thing. That's what all Me Too was about, right? You can go in any... I mean, you go into, like, uh, you know, for example, uh, the... Um, what do you call it? The uh, travel industry, those big cruise ships, massive amounts of sexual and physical abuse. Oh, yeah. uh, 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 people true. people go missing on those trips. They'll they'll get like these. They'll get like Haitian workers that they'll just pick up for like no money, and then they'll like just disappear on the trip, and it'll be like oh mi like accident. Like they could have just been Oops. thrown off the boat. So yeah, like right. whoop, you know the, that's I, like that national park thing. You know, this is you've, I'm sure you've heard about you know the national like people go out to national parks and they just thousands of them go missing and just people are like well I'm sure Mount Lyon got them you know yeah the um the the any industry that has people with a sufficient level of power over other groups is uh is is going to be rife with abuse but I don't think that's tied to any religious or ethnic thing because you're going to see that everywhere in the world no matter who's in charge I just think that's an issue with wealth and power. 
And Hollywood is undeniably a wealthy and powerful institution, but I mean, I probably see the same problems over in Bollywood in India, right? I mean, I have, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably just an all about the place thing. The point that I'm getting at is that oftentimes this, you know, you're, uh, you know, you, you're just a spoiled kid. You don't know what the working class wants. It's always lined up with this accusation that the working class doesn't want immigration, um, which, which is, again, basically just a, a, a reflection of those 20th century, um, you know, we're going to divide the working class by getting them to hyperfix in a race issues thing. I don't think the working class have anything to fear from immigrants or from people of any other ethnic group. So I don't think that it's a product of my bougie upbringing to to point that out. But you can you kind of understand their fears, though? True. But who's propagating those fears? Because the idea that immigrants lower wages for domestic workers is untrue. So the fact that everyone seems to believe that anyway, in spite of like a, a ton of research from multiple like economic institutions showing that it's not the case, like the fact that people still believe it, like there are people propagating that idea. Usually people who have an issue with the race side of things who then want to promote that belief by making it about economics, you know, oh, it's not that we're racist, we're just protecting local jobs but when you bring immigrants in you make work better for essentially everyone in this country because more workers here means more houses we need to build more managers to manage those workers more institutions more mouths to feed more farms to cultivate the more people there are in this country the stronger we all get it's just economy of scale and i'm happy to see that process explode what about i mean should we give any credence to lived experience with what respect like uh, for the for the worker who says, look, uh, my wages were displaced at my job because of the immigrant workforce that came in, for instance. Sure we can. And something should be done about that. For instance, one of the reasons why that displacement happens is because we have such a low minimum wage that they bring in these immigrants and pay them less. You know, the fact that immigrants get paid less than domestic workers is because the malicious parasitic capitalist class feels they can get away with it because immigrants are less likely to speak English, less likely to have friends, less likely to have connections, less likely to strike, less likely to do everything. But if we work together, we can prevent them from driving that schism. There's no reason an immigrant can't do the same kind of work at the same wage, which means they wouldn't be competing with local workers any more than a domestic worker would. You think that would mess the economy up at all? I think it's very doable. And laws have been done in the past to allow for that. We like, for instance, when you have these crackdowns to prevent like uh, immigrant workers from being paid under the table. This is to the benefit of everybody. It's to everyone's benefit. Uh, the only group that benefits from uh, immigrants being brought in to be underpaid is the ultra wealthy because they pay less in wages. But thankfully, I hate the ultra wealthy. And I think a lot of people on the far right do too. But you can't, do. You can't fix true. that problem by getting rid of immigration because all that does is mean they have to find another scapegoat. And we see that happen because even if uh, immigrants aren't coming into the country, we notice there are still groups they try to make uh, more money off of by paying less. For example, they keep trying to lower the minimum working age at a state level. That's something we see happening. Oh, why can't 14 year olds work? Whatever, it's not like high school isn't difficult enough. They try to keep the minimum wage from going up. They try to fragment people, whether or not immigrants are there. They're just the easiest scapegoat. The only way to really escape that whirlpool of economic exploitation is to stand up to the people who would deign to pay one group less than another, to make sure we all have an equal, fair, union-backed shot at the bargaining table. It doesn't... It, I understand what you're saying, but uh, just to give you a, a slight bit of pushback on it, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that the the people who are inside of jobs where they've been working for like GM and shit like this, who suddenly, you know, see their thirty five dollar to forty five dollar an hour that they've rose up the, the last 20 years to get. And they see somebody who comes in who's relatively unskilled, but because there's a labor shortage gets introduced at the same exact wage as them. You can kind of understand why they're fucking pissed off. Oh, sure. Well, you can still have like a wage um, prioritization for seniority. I think that's fine. But at that point, it's not an immigration thing anymore. That's just a who's a new worker versus an old worker thing. I'm OK with like seniority raises or people being promoted in-house or I'm not saying that like a manager needs to be paid the same as a common worker or anything. Well, 
okay, as a communist, I would say that, but for for now, you know, in the short term or whatever, in, in terms <laughs> of more reasonable human being, right, it is a more immediate <laughs> proposition. Um, it's it's just about the idea that some groups through through no merit other than their immigration status or their age or whatever else get paid less uh, because it's it's politically convenient. But that political convenience is only something they can take advantage of because we're not willing to stand up for their rights. If we did, not only would the immigrants make more money, they also wouldn't have a comparative advantage in terms of labor costs over domestic workers. There are policies that can be implemented to prevent any antagonism whatsoever between the material interests of domestic and foreign workers. And if we do that, we'll find that every foreign worker just adds to our labor pool, and we won't have to worry about China outcompeting us in 10 years because they have five times our population. Uh, well, the, but that is, uh, just so you know, subject to change to the extent that a new study just said that uh, they may, may lose 500 million of their population by the middle of the 21st century due to the birth rate crisis that's mm -hmm. going on, yeah. uh, which is kind of an interesting conundrum. I'm not going to hang you up on that. Abundance of labor lowers the demand and value of labor. Most immigrants are low skilled and contending for the working class job. Vosh, would you agree that that's true or is Jack the half full of shit? No, I now, disagree. Mind you, he's from the EU, just so you know. Oh, well, well known. Uh, I disagree. The abundance of labor is uh, lowers the demand for labor in an immediate short term, uh, you know, perfectly spherical cow in a vacuum with no friction type sense. But the more people are in our country, the more demand there is for everything else. And the higher paid immigrants are, the more services they're going to take advantage of within our country. Every additional mouth to feed is another person who's going to shop, is going to drive cars, is going to pay a gas tax, everything. They contribute as much to the future demand as anyone else. The imbalance we see right Right now relative to like the supply demand thing is a product of exploitative labor practices against immigrants for one we pay them less which means that they are more valuable to the ultra wealthy in terms of you know uh, of replacing domestic work and two because they're paid so little they don't invest in the economy the way average working class people do meaning that they do take a job and then don't have the money to buy things from the economy to fuel other people's jobs it's like a lose-lose situation that we crafted because we're not willing to stand up for immigrants and getting rid of immigrants won't solve the problem because that just means that role will be shunted onto another disadvantaged group within our country it used to be young people like 10 year old coal miners or whatever, uh, you know, minorities do get paid disproportionately less in large part because of the areas that they grew up in and the job availabilities they have. We, we have to break the cycle. We have to stand together as members of the working class. Do you fear, Vosh, endless expansionary policy, considering how much like imperialism it can become, uh, knowing that the United States right now has to take care of its labor shortfall due to its lower birth rates? by importing more and more and more immigrants. Um, and if you don't like the word import, you can put in whatever you'd like. Uh, but it does, ne it does necessarily seem that we actually have to have an importation of labor to take care of the labor shortfall due to the, the lessening of birth rates domestically. Uh, do you worry about the ever expansionist policy? Well, eventually, the birth rates are going to settle in every country. You can take a look at all the countries in the world and where their birth rates have trended, and like every country on Earth, including now even the poorest African countries, which in terms of development were behind everyone else, is like rapidly plummeting down to what will probably be the like default average of 2.1 to 2.4. Uh, that seems to be like the healthy average right there. Immigration will always take place because there's never going to be a perfect union between what a country needs in terms of its economic and social, like, needs and what they have available in their own labor force, which is fine. But the imbalance in immigration right now is largely a product of asymmetrical development. In a good future, in my future, I would hope, you know, as many Americans would be moving to Mexico for work as vice versa. People would be moving to Guatemala for the interesting startups and people would be going to, you know, um, yeah, uh, like uh, Mali or, or South Africa uh, for economic opportunity the same way they go now to America. And when that's happening and the birth rates have leveled out, you know, immigration is just going to be people blending across borders, right? What if our birth rates don't level out? We've seen a continuous trend of lowering birth rates, not just across the Western world, but across South America, uh, across all of the North American continent. Uh, we've basically seen it everywhere. The only real rise in birth rates that we see is from the African nations. Um, 
what do we do if we can't just continuously import labor? Well, they, they're not rising. I don't think there's a single country in Africa where the birth rate is rising. You can That's take a incorrect. look. There, there, there are, is there, several... are there any? Is it yeah, like oh, a yeah, yeah. post civil war like population boom? Maybe. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure it actually goes back that far. I think that with the absence of industrialization, uh, some of these places have not experienced full bore industrialization. Their birth rates are uh, way ahead. The only Western, which you might consider a Western nation that has birth rates on par for replacement that I'm aware of is actually Israel. They have massive in vitro fertilization programs, in fact, for their population that are paid for by the state, uh, which is, I think, helped significantly with their birth rate. But my understanding is that the major trend in uh, upright birth rates is coming from African nations and not from almost any, any Western nation you can uh, point to. I'm looking right now and so sub-Saharan Africa has had its fertility rates lower than, well, its, its fertility rate is decreasing lower than other countries, but every part of the world right now is leveling off. In terms of like aggregate averages for a continent, um, most everyone seems to have stabilized at two and has been for about 40 years. North America, Europe and Central Asia, Latin America. And then if you look at South Asia, well, South wait, Asia. We're, we're below Middle replacement East. now, aren't we? In America, I think we're at 2.1, aren't we? Or something like that. I'm only looking for the continent. Canada and Mexico might be slightly higher than the U.S. Um, let me see. America, birth rate. I think we're at 2.1. Oh, we're at 2.1 adjusted for immigration. 1.7 right. locally. Um, 1.7 locally. So you uh, essentially you have to have an endless uh, stream of immigration in order to take care of the falling birth rate in the Western nations. Uh, you could see where that could become problematic if the nations that you're importing immigrants from are no longer at replacement levels themselves. Does this concern you at all? Well, that would just eventually lead to a global population dip, which seems, well, that would be economically difficult, I admit, but it seems like if that's going to happen, that's going to happen. <clears throat> Birth rates are mostly just a product of material circumstances. I don't think there's much you can really do to overcome it. Basically, every industrialized country seems to have had the exact same dip in their um, in in their birth rate. Every country that will industrialize will see the same. It's just a matter of how people relate to their environment, what they have time for. Well, um, what do we do with the elderly? Well, it'll, the elderly it'll, are subsidized uh, mostly by the young. And uh, it, oftentimes it takes, uh, it takes more than just one young person being taxed in order to take care of the elderly. My understanding is that Japan has opened itself up to have uh, uh, over half a million uh, immigrants come in as laborers, so they won't give them citizenship, uh, mm. just to subsidize the elderly population. Yeah, they have uh, that, to. That see, yeah, that seems untenable to me long term. Well, long term, it's not. I mean, this is ultimately just an issue with population booms. We're getting it right now with the boomers here in America. All of the post-war babies are, are going to age out and there's going to be a dip in the relative level of younger people to take care of them. I, it, that seems like it's just kind of an inevitable product of demographics. I don't know if there's a way to overcome that. If it happens at a global level, things will have to level off eventually because obviously if every country is now producing below replacement rates and immigration can no longer shore up that gap, you're going to have like constant economic shortages, elderly people won't be able to be taken care of, and there's going to be increasing demand for products and services that are going unconsumed. So if that happens, there would probably be another boom. I, I think if we, if we want to keep things at replacement level in terms of our birth rates, it would probably behoove us to take a look at the relationship between working class people and the difficulties of their environment.